Did you all even know that nearly 20 people per minute are physically a word by an intimate partner? Yeah, I did not know that. And that's in the U.S. alone. DV is a pervasive issue in society affecting individuals from all walks of life. Victims often struggle with fear, shame and the daunting challenge of speaking out against their, you know, a words, you know, the stigma surrounding DV can make it incredibly difficult for survivors to seek help. So with everything going on with the Diddy Cassie situation, a lot of reality stars and celebrities have been speaking up about DV and their own experiences with DV. But what I want to shed a light on today is women that weaponize DV for their own personal gain and by women I mean Erica Mena and Evelyn Lazada. Erica Mena even went as far as to claim DV against her ex-husband Safari. So after the Diddy video came out Safari tweeted speechless then he came back with D word I can't unsee that video definitely brings back childhood memories. Erica then responded with but yet dot 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 never mind I've been doing real good well Ray J Safari's boy was not having it whatsoever he got in the comment section and said come on Erica don't try to compare the two that ain't right stand down please now she didn't go any further after that now I've never heard from her throughout the last few years of their tumultual, tumultuous marriage and divorce. We've never heard from her that he put his hands on her. It was always, you know, the fact that he cheated on her. He wasn't affectionate. Um, she felt like he wasn't present in their marriage and he took her through, which all could be a mental form of the A word. But She's now claiming that he got physical with her. I mean, with everything that's going on with Diddy, I don't put anything past anyone nowadays. You know what I'm saying? So I would love to say that I can't see Safari doing that, but you just never know. But with a person like Erica, who we have seen be violent on multiple occasions with men and women, it's hard to sympathize with women like her that want to pipe up when it's a hot topic or when it's for their own personal gain or for publicity or for clickbait for whatever and it makes it hard to believe women when you have women like Erica who to me likes to weaponize um pain struggle uh divorce being a parent you know what I'm saying? Now, DV, you know, a lot of people in the comments section did not like that Ray J jumped in. Someone said Ray J, the same clown, pushed his baby mama slash wife in the pool. Someone else said, oh, please, Erica, we haven't forgotten how you used to attack Rich. Um, Someone else said how the F Ray J know what happens in their house. Someone else said, I like Erica, but if Safari ever put his hands on her, then trust me, she would have used it against him already. This wasn't a post about her or why Safari don't want to be with her. It's about the fact that someone really did suffer the A word and Safari has the right to speak on it. So, you know, there was a lot of different opinions on this topic when it comes to Erica and Safari. And like this person, Yummy, said, if this was something that had actually happened, we would have been heard something like this from Erica. She, out of all the people, she would have been used that against him if she could have. And I just, I have a hard time, you know, going there with Erica. Now, as far as Evelyn is concerned, we all know that once a year, <laughs> this woman likes to 
bring up her past DV situation with Ocho Cinco. It never fails. Once a year, this lady has to come out and discuss what happened, what, 10 years ago, if not more. And we all, and I can honestly say this, we all feel like at this point, she weaponizes that situation for her own personal gain. And Evelyn herself has not changed one bit. She got on the internet yesterday and posted a video discussing her past situation with him. Let's take a look. So I wanted to come on here. Um, first and foremost, I want to send all of my love and support to all domestic violence victims. Um, I know the last couple of days have been very difficult, uh, very triggering for a lot of us. Um, and I mean, I've spoken to many and um, it's been tough. You know, it's been really, really hard. You know, no matter how many years it's been that you have experienced domestic violence, um, when you see videos um and you hear about stories of of domestic violence uh it's always triggering no matter how many years it's been you know it kind of just takes you back to that place um so i just wanted to send my love to all of you so um to piggyback off my last video i also feel like if you are a known abuser and you have a history of abusing women um and you have not taken accountability, you have not gotten help, then you should not be sitting up here commenting um, on anybody else's situation. Um, the things that I'm hearing and, and, and that I'm listening to are, it's, it's actually heartbreaking to me, especially for the women that I know um, that have experienced this. Um, to see a known abuser sitting up there and commenting about a situation when you know that you have been a serial abuser. I, I just, I, I'm, I don't understand it. Last video, because I have a lot going on here, but for me, this is not even, this is not even about the uh, abusers. It's about the uh, survivors and the victims. And just wanted to let you know that I stand with you. I love you. I see you. I know it's hard seeing this and hearing this shit. Um, and sometimes um, it's just hard. You just feel like re-victimized all over again. And it's triggering and it's negative and it gives you anxiety and all these things. So, um, but just wanted to let you know that I stand with you. I love you. Um, and we will definitely get through this together. I love you guys. She also put this up on her Instagram scene known a word comment on the DV incidents is unacceptable. If you've hurt others, you have no right to speak on these matters. We need accountability, not hypocrisy. Hashtag hold a words accountable. And I 100% agree with holding people accountable for their actions. But Miss Evelyn, when are you going to hold yourself accountable for your actions? Like I said, this woman every year, like Groundhog's Day, has to remind us in the whole world that she was in a DV situation. And we would all feel for her, ride with her, side with her, if she did not continue to have some form of a relationship with her so-called A-word years after their incident. Like, it's she wants to villainize him when it suits her, but in other instances, she wants to be his friend and still have a friendship and a relationship with him, so much so that it was what, three, four years ago when you just got into a whole argument with a chick over this man on your reality show. Okay, OG said we can talk. Cece says she has nothing to say. You wanted to bring up Chad yesterday. You called me ugly. And I said, well, Chad thinks I'm beautiful because yeah. he does. Does he? He does. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, let's pull out exhibit A, B, C, and D. 
Are you gonna talk or are you gonna- No, no, gonna, I'm gonna pull uh, out the DMs. Yours? No. Yes, boo-boo. No. Exhibit A, September 5th, 2013. Chatty, let's do lunch. Let me get my text messages. Okay. Exhibit Bring A. <laughs> I'll get my text messages because we pull it up Twitter and those are deleted and I'll print the real ones. The ones where he DM'd me first and followed me first. I'm not quite sure how she was able to conjure up old direct messages between Chad and I. However, the main component that's missing is everything that Chad said to me. You tried you, You're it. like, you're having a conversation with yourself here. No. June 15, 2014. Actually, we met in 2011. 2011? What the f Chad and I, we were engaged. We got married in 2012, so are you just DMing a man that you know is about to be married? You're a goofy Chad, Ocho Cinco, my guy. So Chad was actually messing with OG while he was with Evelyn. He up. That's your guy? He's a good right. guy. That's I why these? I never f why he sent these and said you're just no. Those were deleted, boo boo. I find it extremely naive and ignorant of Evelyn to literally think that Chad and I only communicated on Twitter. Like, girl, get it together. Connect the dots. The numbers were exchanged and separate conversations happened afterwards. You're having a conversation no. with yourself. That's Happy a lie. Father's Day. Here we oh, go. My chatty bear. Here we go. Nice to see you today. January 4th, 2011. Okay, you are fine. How old are you? Thank you. I'm 26. Right. Boyfriend? No. What about yourself? Well, I do deal with someone, but okay. we could be BFFs. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. So you're precious. Right? I want more pictures. You look good. Would you like to know that you're still DMing him? He knows. He knows. I think it's mighty funny that these ladies think that I would actually cheat on my man Kwame with Chad. The messages that I have are from Chad trying to get me. And the messages that I presented are me saying we could be great friends. Strictly platonic. That's fake. What, That's is fake. Ah! That oh, you missed the part where he said yeah, I don't want your man to beat me up? You can see me pull it up and they won't be doing him. I married don't him. Want we him. were together. That's the difference between Been me there and you. Did that. Now, I don't know about you. But any man that did to me what was done to her, I'm never speaking to you again in my life. You will never have to worry about me. But you were the same chick that was so caught up and had your panties in a bunch because another co-star on your show brought up the fact that she used to talk to your ex-husband that it t sent you into a tailspin. Now, once again, after somebody has marked me as Harry Potter for the rest of my life via my forehead, I would not care who that person talked to, what he said to this person. I would not care. I would not go out of my way on a cast vacation to reach out to my ex-husband who DV'd me to ask him whether or not he found this girl attractive. It's like, girl, pick a lane. That's why I can never sympathize with her. Oh, and let's not forget this epic interview where she said, Each one of you ladies, let's say that you are stranded. No money, no food, no nothing. In the middle of nowhere, mm -hmm. but you got your cell phone. Mm -hmm. And you got the numbers of your exes in the <laughs> Which one are you going to call? Which one do you have the most faith in? Yeah, which one? <laughs> That's hard. Which one do you, your life is on the line. Which one do you have the most faith in? I know one that's definitely coming, but I don't know if that's the one you have. Chad. Chad. I was gonna say. I'm like, and <laughs> not that I don't have faith. The car, car will be there, but I mean, we're talking about my life is on the line. Like, I just can't. It to me, she weaponizes what happened to her. She uses it for publicity, for clickbait, for another five minutes of fame. She uses it when it suits her and her career. I just can't rock with her, and I think this is why DV has such a bad 
name and stigma on it and why women don't come forward, why women are not believed. Because to me, there are women like her and Erica Mena out there that make the situation harder for women that are actually going through this horrible situation. And I'm not saying that Evelyn didn't go through something, but what I'm saying is women like Evelyn who want to pick and choose when it suits her best. I just can't, I, I can't sympathize or rock with that. Let me know down below in the comment section. Do you guys understand where I'm coming from with this? Let me know your thoughts on the situation when it comes to both ladies. I really want to hear your thoughts. Make sure you guys thumbs up this video, subscribe and turn on your post notifications. So you know when my videos drop, I love you and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.